This program features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. Good afternoon, good afternoon everybody, happy Sunday afternoon, welcome aboard the Sunset Safari on this Easter Sunday here in Juma Private Game Reserve where it's a lovely clear sky out there although we had a little bit of rain after drive and on drive this morning. Hello my name is Steve, joined by BK on camera and we are out and about in the thick of it this afternoon to find apparently some chocolate. BK are you keen? I'm keen. Yep. Okay, so both Cedric and myself are going to be given clues, but first, before we jump into that, don't forget we are live and interactive, and your questions and comments are valuable to us. Send them through using the app or the website, YouTube chat stream, or all important hashtag on Twitter. Okay, so Cedric and I are going to be given some clues, and I believe it's going to be posted somewhere for you to see it, and excuse the language, but James Hendry was involved. From thence to this loftiest place doth my signal find warm embrace. Tither into ancient serving room and finally into sweet global bloom. Now, what on earth does that mean, everybody? I've been scratching my head. Some of you might think to yourselves, what did he just say? From me thence to this loftiest place doth my signal find warm embrace tither into ancient serving room and finally into sweet global boom now all i can think about really is the fact that there's a high point and something puts a signal into that high point or receives signal from that high point and then goes into some form of room and then sends it out to you the audience so i feel like it's got something to do with one of our masts gary mast we're going to go check it out. BK, are you excited? Hmm? I don't know how many clues there are. I'm really keen to go and catch up on some lions and some buffalo. So we're going to try to smash this um, Easter egg hunt as quick as we possibly can. Um, we have a bit of a head start on Cedric. He would be keen to get on his car very quickly to try to catch us. But I mean, I might not even have a clue what I've just said to all of you. It's possible that I don't know what I'm talking about. Six clues. Okay. Well, I am the reigning Easter egg champion, by the way. Let's not let my ego not get to me. I won last year's Easter egg hunt, but uh, Tess and I did the clues for each other. Now James has done the clues, so I'm a little bit worried. I'm a little bit worried. Anyway, we're going to go to Gary Mast and see what we find there. It's a lofty place, there's signal, there's a serving room. I don't know. Giraffe girl, let's do it. Let's do it. Now, please, everybody, if you can come up with better solutions for the answer that I've come up with, please do feel free to let me know. Sorry, BK, the camera just bounced a little bit there. That was uh, the bumpy road. I noticed the camera move as I looked at it. It was, the force is strong with me this afternoon. <laughs> oh, only the Star Wars fans out there will know what I just said. Who isn't a Star Wars fan though? Come on. <laughs> okay, so this is Zoe's Road. It takes us towards Balanati's Road, which will take us onto the little Link Road. So most of you are agreeing it sounds like it's probably one of the masts. We tell a mast is through an electric fence with a gate and that just seemed too complicated. Not impossible, but it just seemed too complicated. I have never been into Gary serving room before. 
but uh, maybe I should go a bit quicker. As I said, we want to try to smash this as quickly as we can, eh, BK? I'm really not going that fast, everybody. It just looks like it. It was just a moment of excitement there. A moment of excitement. I do enjoy chocolate. I hope it's good chocolate. James, good chocolate? I don't know if James is watching or if he can hear me. <laughs> Grumpy old man, you hope the egg isn't at the top of the mast. Well, I'm not scared. I'd climb. I overcame my fear of heights years ago when I was working on boats. I was quite afraid of heights. And then I went to go work on a, a big big double-masted, double-story yacht uh, that was stationed there. And I got there and the guy's like, cool, Steve, welcome. We've just come around the Horn of Africa and we're going to start by cleaning the boat from the top to the bottom. Yeah, I went up one mast in a bosun's chair in order to clean all the stays all the way down. Then I went up the other mast, clean all that thing, went down the front sail. And even in the yard, the boat moves like this. It was 273 feet. Yeah, so I'm not afraid of heights anymore after that. That was a long time ago. I was terrified. I first got up in this, you don't trust the rope. You're holding there, you got a bucket of hot water, uh, you got a power hose, and every time the water gets too dirty, you got to lower it down and the rope gets pulled like this. When I went up, I was holding on for dear life for about half an hour and then white knuckling until eventually you start to trust the rope and then I started having some fun. Yeah, it was in Mallorca, Palma del Mallorca. A very young Steve back then. Okay, so we're approaching Gary Mast as we speak. Do, 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 do. Because I'm gonna stop, you're gonna run in. I'm joking, you're not gonna run in. I'm going to have to figure out where they would do it here. Have you ever been in here? Yes, you have. Can I park like this? So welcome to Gary Mast, everybody. It's not very exciting. Okay, we're gonna send you over the dam cam for a moment while I scratch around here in this building. Experience captivating wildlife documentaries, showcasing incredible animal behavior. For free by visiting lionmountain.tv or downloading the app. Accessible on both Apple and Android platforms.
Well, welcome back, everybody. We did indeed find our clue. Here, I just, please, help me, please. <laughs> Here is a cavity where oft-named mobile artichoke arrives at Froggy Pond. Thence little south and little east to late Leadwood thus excavated. So, Froggy Pond is Chilipan. Mobile artichoke. Artichoke heart? Is that a mobile moving hyena? Hyena, hyena the heart, the hyena? And then from there, maybe we'll find a leadwood that has been excavated, but it's dead, a late leadwood. Let's give it a try, shall we? Let's go to Chilipan and see what we can find. <laughs> Please do send me your questions or your comments and help. There was no chocolate there, everybody. There's obviously only going to be chocolate at the end. Not even a little teaser. <laughs> Not even a little teaser. You help us, everyone, and we will go find lions and buffalo offs. Help us, help you. Don't hold back now, really, please. We encourage your feedback and your comments. Here is a cavity where oft-named mobile artichoke arrives at Froggy Pond. Thence little south and little east to late Leadwood thus excavated. Okay, with that in mind, let's send you over to Cedric to say good afternoon. Yes, a happy Easter to everybody. A happy Easter Sunday. Thank you so much, uh, Steve. And as you can see, it's beautiful skies at the moment. And I am looking forward to this Easter hunt on a beautiful uh, Sunday afternoon here at Juma Private Game Reserve in the Sabi Sands. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Cedric. And behind the camera with me on Rusty, we've got Khat. All right, so I've got my first clue. All right, so my first clue is listen properly. All right, yeah, it is, and it is quite high English. This one, but uh, I can imagine this is uh, only JMO's. Okay, this old dendro dendrologist <coughs> dendrologist delight. So uh, dendrologist uh, dendrologist is pretty much a person that studies trees and wood. Stands alone and without plight, for no makoro here will float. Her Okavango cousins cannot so gloat. Mm. So, when I say stand alone and without plight, stand alone. And we've only got one tree that really stands out here by itself and uh, we don't really have another one of its kind around in this area. And uh, mm, Okavango cousins cannot so gloat. So there he's got cousins, the same tree that's got cousins up there in uh, Botswana. And uh, that must be a tree called the sausage tree. Sausage tree? Sausage tree. And that's just down there. It's by itself. But let's go and take a look. Let's see. <laughs> All right, that's my first one. Let's go. Go, go, go. All right, let's see. Let's see if we can get that. So it's just down here. The sausage tree. So yes, I've been kind of marinating over that. Pula, yes, uh, egg saloon safari. We will have one. Thank you so much, and a happy Easter to you too, Pula. Alrighty then, let's get down to the sausage tree. So the sausage tree is just down here, and that is like the only one around here. I can't think of another sausage tree in this area except this one here on Philemon's dip, and. Uh, it's gonna be a winner, 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 
chicken dinner. Yes. And I'm looking forward to this afternoon's drive. Yeah, it's gonna be nice having a little bit of fun with this e uh, Easter hunt. Always a lot of fun. And maybe by doing this Easter hunt, we might even bump into, you know, some cats for the sun uh, Sunday afternoon. Definitely we'll go and, I'm sure Steve will want to go and follow up on the Nkuhumas. I'm going to see if they're still around there at uh, Twin Dam's area. But yeah, all right, so here's the sausage tree, the sausage tree. Do, do, do. Now, I have to go look for a, 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 a clue there, eh? I'm, I need to go look for a clue. All right. All right, well, hopefully it well, won't be my last time looking for a clue. All right, let's go. All right, uh, all right, so this is the... Uh, so now I'm going to use my tracking skills. I'm going to see where, you know, I can see where the guys went to go and hide the clue here somewhere. So I'm going to look at the grass that's been pushed over. There's no grass that's been pushed over here. Yeah, I can see, I can see a little pathway here. Somebody walked here, somebody. I've got this beautiful, beautiful sausage tree. All right, hopefully they didn't go hide it right at over there. <laughs> ah. Oh, <laughs> yes. Got it. All righty. Now you can understand why they call it a sausage tree. Look at this big sausage. Slow and heavy. Guess what animal eats this and loves this? Hippopotamus. Hippos love eating the sausage from a sausage tree. That's one thing that they enjoy. And it's very heavy. Never park under a sausage tree because it'll smash your windscreen. All right. Hmm. Oh, there's all the clues. Oh, this one. All right. All right. This one is going to. Fruiting gracious plant. Did you know you gave ours sobre? <laughs> James, yeah. To the, to, the, uh, to the descendants of Daniel's tormentors who lived so far away. Your kind normally thrive on baked clay fortress, but you stand alone on southwest grassness. No idea. <laughs> if there was a blank look, I think that was it. I, I'm totally taken back. Fruiting gracious plant. Please, if you if you know this, uh, if you got this, I'll read it again. Fruiting gracious plant. Did you know you gave us sobre? To the descendants of Daniel's tormentors. To the descendants of Daniel's tormentors, who lived so far away. Your kind normally thrive on baked clay fortress, but you stand alone on southwest grassness. <laughs> All right. All right, uh, that is that. Eh? So I think uh, let's go look for lions. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was supposed to take just the one. Oh. Molly, they are very hectic. Sorry, I was only supposed to take the one. Maybe I must leave a present in here for Steve. <laughs> a hairy caterpillar. <laughs> I'm not so mean. <laughs> Experience captivating wildlife documentaries showcasing incredible animal behavior for free by visiting 
lionmountain.tv or downloading the app. Accessible on both Apple and Android platforms. Okay, this is not east, by the way. This is south. And anyway. That doesn't make sense because both of these inside here are the same. I checked now. <laughs> but I'll only take one and leave the other one there. Maybe the objective of James was to send us on a wild goose chase so that we're not chasing the same clue. A home for Isoptera long departed now stands vacant, dilapidated. Donna Juma, here did birth, her legacy in the southeast earth. That is Gwen's den. That is Gwen's den on the southern boundary. I'm almost certain it is the den that James Henry himself got stuck in with the, dro with the, the rover. I'm guessing anyway. Donna Juma. Would that not be like the original Juma clan leader, everybody? Makes sense, right? And our Soptura is uh, termites. A home for our Soptura long departed, so it's dead termite mound. Stands vacant and dilapidated. Old termite mound. Donna Juma here did birth. Gwen's then. Okay, so actually, what uh, we've got a third clue, everybody, if you've just joined us. It is the uh, a home from departed, now stands vacant, dilapidated. Donna Juma here at birth, her legacy in the southeast earth. So I'm pretty sure that's Gwen's den on the southern boundary. Pretty sure. Marvelous African sunset, marvelous. Well, James is a marvelous fellow and he does like to wordsmith. So, I think the quickest way is to go straight to Gary, Maine, and then there. Maybe we will see some lions along the way. Well, if we, we hit twin dams and lions are hunting buffalo, well, we possibly might stop hunting eggs. I don't know. 
maybe we will. The road taking it. What can we do? What we do, BK? Okay, well, our signal's dipping, so we're gonna link you to Cedric at a moment and then we're gonna go south. Alright, sorry losing uh, Steve there, but uh, yeah, so I'm just trying to still figure out my clue. Yeah. Fruiting gracious plant, did you know you gave us a break? To the descendants of Daniel's tormentors, who lived so far away. Your kind normally thrive on black uh, clay, well, th thrive on baked clay fortresses, so termite mounds, like this one that's just passing, yeah. But you stand alone. On southwest grass, this southwest, maybe on the southwest, but you stand alone on southwest grass. That's maybe the southwestern corner. That's exactly. Giraffe call a girl. I think so. I think it's uh, the, the Bay Clay Fortress is a termite mound. But you stand alone on the southwest grass. I'm then thinking, ah, I don't know, maybe that Bourbin, weeping Bourbin, to the descendants of Daniel's tormentors, to the descendants of Daniel's tormentors, who lived so far away. I mean, uh, who's Daniel's tormentors? Turns out Daniel's tormentors who lived so far away. <clears throat> ah, so yes, uh, that's a lion. All right, so lion to the descendants of Daniel. Ah, okay, so that might be the grasslands, maybe that Nkuhuma tree. Think about Nkuhuma tree. Nkuhuma's got the name because of that tree there. And uh, it's just, uh, you find them normally close to a baked clay fortress yeah but it stands alone on the southwest grasslands there so that's a southwest corner it's grasslands there it's a lion tree Nkuhuma tree known as a, a brown ivory as well brown ivory so maybe a brown ivory I like that one thank you so much uh, for that uh, one about uh, Daniel's descendants or Daniel's tormentors ah I think that could have been uh, the one. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, let's let's go. Let's, uh, so we're right here. So it's right this side. Grasslands. Yeah. I think we've got it. We've got number two. Steve, we're coming for you. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, little Steenbocky. It's a little Steenbock. Um, yeah. Don't run, stay. All right, don't worry. All right, it's gone. He just ran away. Okay, Nguma tree. Daniel's descendant there. Mm. That was clever. This is definitely a, a, a James Henry kind of uh, mentality thing. This because uh, you can just see it's all. Right. Yeah, that's James. It's just, it just says James all over. Oh, there's a whole lot of kudus here. Sorry, kudus. Yeah, we're just going to come a little bit past you. Yeah, don't worry. We're just going to say hello. Beautiful male kudu. But I... Yeah. All right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there it is. This is the Nkuhuma tree. This is the brown ivory known as uh, in Shangan Nkuhuma. Let's see, hopefully I don't drive over the bottle here. Yeah. 
Let's see. Yep, they tormenting me at the moment. All right, let's see. Let's see where it's been hidden. Ah, there, <laughs> not, ah, there it is. Dee -dee -dee. All right, next clue. It's stuck in there. Ah, oh, so. Maybe we must put like itching powder in there for Steve. <laughs> put his head in there. All right. All right, let's see what the next one says. This is going to be interesting. <sighs> Over here, the gentle night terror rest. A bizarrely unsafe ledge for tiny Ave to nest. Over here, the gentle night terror rest. Ah, it is only one thing. I'm sure it's the wigs. Let's see. A bizarrely unsafe ledge for tiny Ave to nest. Yeah. Must be in the Moati, I'm sure it must be the wigs. It's the wigs. It's the spotted eagle owls. Let's go. The spotted eagle owls, that's it. We have to go to now the Molawati. Let's see if we can get there. What do you think, Kat? Over here did gentle night terrorist. Over here did a gentle night terrorist. A bizarrely unsafe ledge for the tiny ave to nest, yeah. So yeah, to me it sounds like the wigs. That's the wigs. On we go. All right, let's uh, get to the wigs and while we get there, let's head over to Steve to see if he's come right with his next clue. Well, everybody, we found our fourth clue and while we roll down the hill I'll read it to you this old dendrologist's delight stands alone and without plight for no Makoro here will float her Okavango cousins cannot so gloat I mean a dendrologist is a study of trees so someone who loves trees and it stands alone there on its own, which makes me feel like it's supposed to be alive, but without plight. And no more coral here will float. So it sounds like it's a leadwood tree because leadwoods are heavy. You wouldn't make you good luck making a, a makoro is a raft, really. It's a little canoe. And her Okavango cousins cannot so gloat. Huh. It, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to go check this lead, this dead leadwood tree. Just over here. That's a guess. Oh, we did see lions on our way here, by the way. Lying up in the shade. We'll be going to them shortly. This is clue number four. So once we've done four, we've got five, and then we've got chocolate. BK? Chocolate? Okay, Ledwood Road is coming up. What do you think, everybody? Stands alone without plight. Essentially means it should be a should be alive, right? But um, most of the wood we have out here will float, but a leadwood will not float. Leadwoods are, are heavy; they're dense, they're heavy, and it's very close to where we are. So I don't know. Would James be that cheeky? James is very cheeky. Let's have a look. Ledwood tree is right over here. Cosby Carol, this is a hoot. <laughs> You're enjoying it. If it's not this tree here, then it's probably our massive jackalberry there on Gary Cut Line. Which means James would want us to go as far away as we possibly can. This is the dead leadwood I was thinking it would be. Just be careful of danger. No, I don't think it's this one. We'll give it a little hug though while we're here. Mm. That's right. With, eh? 
that's <laughs> a proper cavity. I wouldn't stick my hand in there. I wouldn't stick my hand in there. Okay. So I think we're going to go back and we're going to go check. Of course, it's going to have to be a, a tree that is alive. Stands alone for making a cora here. For no more cora here will float. Her Okvango cousins cannot so gloat. Maybe because it's on Gary Cut Line and there's a drainage line there with no water, so it wouldn't float because there's no water. Hey. Help us out, everybody. We are a little bit stumped. Excuse the pun. Oh, quickest way. It's not the quickest way, but that'll get us there. Think food. Safari fan says I must think food. Well, Jackalberry's got food. Dendrologist's delight, a study of trees. Delightful for a tree. So I'm guessing that you're, you're thinking that I'm completely wrong in my thoughts. Stands alone. That jackalberry does stand alone. For no Mokoro, he will float. Her Okavango cousins cannot so gloat. I'm stumped everybody. Jamie, yeah, I know. Don't you find jackalberries in Botswana? I know you find leadwoods in Botswana. Know that you find leadwoods in Botswana. I don't know about jackalberry though. Maybe someone can do a quick Google search for me. I'm sure you do though, you must. Stumped. We are stumped. The problem is, is that that's on the other side of Druma, the tree I'm going to. So unless they get any other hard evidence beforehand, we've got a long drive ahead of us. Just for an assumption. Food when it comes to the name. Jackalberry? Berry? I don't know. I don't know where you get that out of that. You know something we don't. Or you're taking us, us down a line of inquiry. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. BK, come on. Help me out. Think food. I don't know what, what that's supposed to mean. I don't know how we get food out of that. Out of that name. Oh well. We shall just drive along and maybe it will pop up in our heads. We find a leopard in that tree now. That's going to be the end of our treasure hunt. <laughs> I thought I saw a tail. Did I see a tail? We've got a refreshing splash of entertainment this March. 
Africam is surfacing with a new show. Join us every morning and submerge yourself in nature's ambiance. Watch it live and transport yourself to the finest watering holes across Africa. Wild Earth, connecting with nature. All right, so I have made my way to the third clue, and the third clue, as I said, was uh, pretty much taking us uh, towards uh, the wig's nest, and uh, here we are. Ta-da! Yeah, in the Molawati drainage line, and this is the, where the wigs, those two spotted eagle owls, they like to pretty much nest in here. And the only thing that's nesting in here at the moment is a little bottle with a clue inside there, so let's grab that. Let's grab it. I want to see if Steve's been here already. Is there, it's not, there's still two. <laughs> he hasn't been here because there's still two. So I'll have to leave this one for him. There we go, Steve. Oh, we should have brought that rubber snake with. <laughs> we should have put that rubber snake just there. All right, so, so what's, uh, what it says here. <sighs> From me, thence, to this loftiest place doth my signal find warm embrace thither into ancient serving room and finally into sweet global bloom okay I'll, I'll listen properly I'll read it one more so please help me on this one from me thence to this loftiest place doth my signal find warmth embrace the uh, thither into ancient serving room and finally into sweet global bloom <clears throat> from me thence to this loftiest place doth my signal find warmth embrace thither into ancient serving room oh those people they are relentless relentless all right thither into ancient serving room and finally into sweet global bloom. Well, yes, Steve. There you go, Steve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ready? What do you think? Please let me know. Please let me know. This one is difficult. From me, thence to this loftiest place. To this loftiest place. Doth my signal find warm. Doth my signal. So signal. Signal find warm embrace. 
Father, into ancient serving room, ancient serving room, and finally into sweet global bloom. Signal, find warmth, embrace. Signal, must be signal for uh, rusty and wind. Something to do with that, I'm sure. From me then. So, okay. Anyway, let's go and uh, ponder about this uh, little riddle. James, James, James. Yep. How do you come up with the things like this? All right, on we shall go. I don't know where to, but uh, I shall think about this one. I'm gonna just put it out to you now. Ancient serving room. All right, while we continue with this and trying to figure out this uh, clue, let's go over to Steve. Thanks, Seders. I think we just saw you on our way past. We did a bit of a loop around. Obviously having no idea where to go. We've had to cut all the way back again. But we feel like we might be on the right track. And we're on Pangolin track once again. That mobile artichoke was very clever. That was very clever. I didn't even think of that. Pangolin meets Froggy Pond. Very clever. I think I got stumped because Gwen said something in my ear that Cedric's found his clue already and you're like, how? How did he? Then I got very confused and disheartened for a moment. But we stayed the course and uh, we found our dead leadwood. Now we're hoping that the one and only sausage tree on Juma has got something for us. BK, what do you reckon? Vane, I'm trying. We don't know if we're even on the right track. I mean, if we get to the sausage tree and there's no clue there, I actually have no idea what I'm going to do. I'll probably eat some fruit, not from the sausage tree, but from my bag. And I have a top up my tea. I haven't had a tea yet. Shock horror. Okay, we're coming down to Philemon's Dip. Now, eminently over this bump. Hold on, BK, it's a bit bumpy here. Down into the dip we go. Are you ready for the big re potential reveal? <laughs> potential reveal. Potential reveal. Okay, there is the sausage tree. <sighs> BK, you're going to lock it off and come give me a hand because I know you got great eyesight. Watch out. Watch out. A sausage. We got it. Lots of interesting little jars. There's only one in here. There's only one in here, Gwen. Fruiting gracious plant, did you know you gave your sobriquet? Oh, okay, so Cedric was here first. No wonder I'm getting a bit confusticated. Fruiting, gracious plant, did you know you gave your sobriquet to the descendants of Daniel's tormentors who live so far away? Your kind normally thrive on baked clay fortress, but you stand alone on southward grass ness. Oh my word. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Shall we try that again? Fruiting gracious plant, did you know you gave your sobriquet? S-O-B-R-I-Q-E-T, I'm guessing it's sobriquet, sobriquet. To the descendants of Daniel's tormentors who lived so far away. Your kind normally thrives on baked clay fortress, but you stand alone on southwest grass ness. Okay, so this is a tree that lives on baked clay normally, but this one's standing alone on the southwest grassy area. You're going to just stay with me, Gwen, for this whole time, looking crazily awkward and weird and not having a clue what I'm thinking or doing. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it's a lion's. Daniel's tormentors was the, was the lion's, right? Daniel in the lion's cage. Was it not correct? But the descendants of Daniel's tormentors, who lived so far away. Was it not Daniel's in the lion's cave? Or That makes sense to me, but the de to the descendants of Daniel's tormentors. Okay, so there's lions. Who lived so far away? Your kind normally thrive on baked clay fortress. But you stand alone on a southwest Grass ness. Your car normally thrive on baked clay fortress. That is southwest grass. That is the Unkuhuma tree on the corner there. That has shown up on the show 50 million times in the last few days. And it normally grows on a termite mound, which is baked clay. And that one does not. Haha. -ha. Haha, -ha, we are going to find this now and hopefully we will be bringing home the chocolate.
How do you know I'm close, uh, Gwen? Oh, my thought process, yeah. No, I don't know this one. Serving room. I think maybe for this for this clue, I'm just going to be driving around and hoping for a bottle to appear somewhere. And the best thing I can do is try and track down. Yeah, it's uh, picky, picky. Um, Oh, that's going to be Gary Moss. That's far that side. All right, so maybe it's lofted. Yeah, maybe because it says doth my single find warmth embrace. Ah, okay. All right, so maybe if we're Telemos. Find into sweet global, global bloom. Yeah, maybe, maybe if we're Telemos. Thanks, Pucky. Let's see. Let's go there. Yeah, birds alarm calling, yeah. Sorry, I just hear birds alarm calling. Usually when crested Franklin's alarm call like that, they usually might be a snake or a leopard, maybe a slender mongoose, you never know. But they're not happy. Africans, uh, name of the dam that's got a tall tail. Okay, like the Gary Mast. Well, then I'm completely in the, uh, in the opposite side. Okay, well, let's uh, get. We've got like uh, 5,000 kilometers to cover here. Let's uh, see if we can cover this uh, distance. Hmm. All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. I don't know, something, yeah. Something this side. Oh, I think like a black mamba or something like that. Just we haven't seen a black mamba for a while, and it's, the sun is shining now this afternoon. So we'd actually think that maybe we get some of the reptiles that's out and some of the snakes in that that's busy slithering around here. Hmm. We had the black mamba here just here the other day, just here. And the one that was actually chasing the hare. Oh, see right here. Huh. All right, Gary Mast, here we come. All right, so this is going to be a, a long trip. I don't know if we're still on, we're still alive. When are you still there? Terry, yes, uh, if I just knew that the clues were going to be in bottles like that, I would have brought a whole lot of little interesting gadgets with me, like, you know, like a mouse trap to put it in there, so when he puts his fingers in there, whoop, I've got his fingers, like a couple of hairy caterpillars, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, would have been, I would have played very dirty uh, today if I knew those bottles were going to be put in bottles and I've loud. Uh, anyway, no, I'm just joking. I'm not like that. I'm a very a decent person. Very most.
go. It's going to be a, a long one. Or it might even be if we're telemast. Might be either one. Gary or Voyatella, ancient serving room. Uh, might be Voyatella mast. But anyway, while well, we're going to head to that side to that uh, mast, let's go head over to Steve. Back, everyone. Well, before we lose a little bit of signal here, we found our uh, Unkuhuma tree, which uh, did prove to be successful. Over here, did gentle night terror rest. A bizarrely unsafe ledge for tiny avi to nest. Now that makes sense to me that that is the the wigs residence, the giant eagle owl wigs residence. So I would lose signal if I go into the drainage line. So I'm going to approach the top, where I might also lose a little bit of signal, but it's not the same as going in. But we will bypass the lions now on our way. A little help. See you soon. Kay and I are hopefully about to win this, but um, this is Klubisk, which means that where we're going now is potentially the eggs, or where we will find the eggs. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, the lions are still there. Okay. I thought they were gone. No time for lions. We've got chocolate to find, BK. We'll be with you ladies shortly. Shortly, we are coming. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Three, two adult lionesses, or two lionesses and one male. You've seen them all before. We shall be back with them momentarily. Now, if I go down there and in the river, you will lose me. So I'm going to attempt to do this from the top side. Just walk into that little crack of the owl nest. We haven't seen them there for some time, so don't feel like we'll be disturbing any owls. Okay, well, as our signal dips, let's send you over to Cedric, see if he's figured out which mast. Thanks, Steve. All right, so I'm going to try and get to Gary Mast now, just to see if we can get there. <laughs> we did pass Twin Dams and uh, a little bit earlier on while I was making my way to the Wigs and uh, you know, two Nkuma females and uh, the Telemati male were both just uh, resting there at the inflow. So I'm sure Steve will want to go there as soon as he gets his last uh, egg. And I shall just continue heading to the other side of uh, Juma to go get my next clue. Gary Mast. That must be a thing to sing a, a cross country song now. Going on cross country, yeah. Ruth, yes, exactly. Now you can understand how big Juma is. Juma's big. There's a lot of things and there's a lot of squeaking here. Yeah. All the little squirrels are back in the house. But uh, Ruth, yeah, it's far. I mean, from one side to the other side, you can see going from east to west. And now I'm going back to the west. And I was actually going to go to the west this afternoon. Um, think, I'm hoping for maybe tortoise pan or uh, tortoise pan and uh, Tiani. They are busy mating, and they were last seen at Safari Donga North. So that is just west uh, into Safari Arethusa, not too far from Juma. And I was actually planning to rather go that side for this afternoon and see if we can get any luck for those two leopards. I can imagine seeing Tiani again. So Tiani was seen, I was actually asking the question this morning, was when last was Tiani seen or was Tiani ever seen on Wild Earth? And uh, apparently uh, Tristan saw Tiani, I think it was in 2019, and I saw Tiani with uh, Laluca, and Laluca was still a cub. And I saw him in 2019 on Simon Bili. 
Rusty, Rusty needs uh, some uh, some grease or oil or something in the in engine. Yeah. Out in the wild, life moves fast. To capture the action you've got to be in the right spot at the wrong time. Now, incredible animal behavior, selected from amazing amateur and professional footage to reveal the secret lives of animals in motion. This is raw nature caught in the act. anything there. Hmm? Oh, it's still loud. Oh, okay. Sorry, my cobs is not working at all. Don't know what's happening here. <clears throat> no idea. Thank you, Gert. Welcome back, everyone. Well, we've had some success in tracking down the lines. I this morning, how many did Cedric have? He had, last night there were seven, I can't remember. But uh, we got two females here, 
and one male. And the fact that we're with the lions, everybody, is um, probably because our last clue paid off. And we found some chocolate. But it's very cheeky because whoever put the chocolate there took an egg. Maybe there was an owl. Maybe it was an owl who did that, but someone broke open this and took an egg, which I think is very cheeky, but understandable for the efforts. Thank you for an entertaining afternoon, James Hendry, and this art in the field and the clues, of course. Well done, Brabike. We're going to be scoffing down chocolate for days. I'm only joking. Just this afternoon. <laughs> Peter, thank you very much. It was a challenge, I must admit, and the clues you were given were very helpful. I think without those clues we would have been scratching our head quite some more, quite a lot, especially with the uh, Sausage tree. Now, does anybody know how many lions were here this morning? I think there were seven last night. But, uh, the buffalo are nowhere to be seen. On our way out of here earlier, we saw lots of tracks of the buffalo. They seem to have gone south. Lots and lots of them. Now, it's possible that uh, Chella's gone back to her den and or uh, the lions decided to move off. Well and truly they well and truly full a couple days ago, the lionesses, and they have digested. Might be the afternoon for them to catch some food. Lots of little jars and assortments of things that we found in the field that we need to take back. Giraffe girl, there were seven plus a telemati male. Okay, I don't see the other five lionesses. Doesn't make sense that four would have left and two would have remained. Makes sense that Chella might have gone to go investigate cubs. Maybe these two are trying to make an impression on this male. If you're just joining us, everybody, Cedric and I have been running around following Easter egg clues put together by James Hendry. It was rather entertaining, if not a little bit frustrating at times, but beautifully put together. And chocolate was at the end of the rainbow. Here to know, the black dam males are still around, they're just covering a large area and this young male is just floating. Um, if they come across him, they'll give him a hiding, but uh, he's good at moving. 
Uh, he, he's associated or used to associating with females, namely the pride he came from. And so he's very good at following females and then picking up on the scraps or at least dominating and taking more food than they do. So he'll do that until either they beat him or males beat him or until he meets other young males that are of a similar caliber to him and are looking to establish a pride territory or a coalition. But essentially he's in that in that sort of zone of unknown. If he is the Telemati boy, then he's Dark Man's son. So the black damn males will give him a hiding if they do come across him. And he'll learn and he'll move and he'll move until eventually he's big enough and has had enough scraps and joins one, two, three other boys. It's possible that that might happen. Or it's possible he might become a big dominant male on his own and claim pride territory. That does happen, like with S8. But uh, joining a coalition or having other coalition members does make it more beneficial. Miss <laughs> Lobo, it is indeed the descendants of Daniel's tormentors. I was thinking that maybe the clues got put together in such a way that it was about the lions here on this grassy patch. But this is south. And uh, BK was like, how about the Unkuhuma tree that's growing there on the western side? And then light bulb moment, BK. Thank you for that. Teamwork. We just spare a thought for Cedric. He was a little bit behind us because of on Safari Show. Don't worry, Ced. Is we will be saving some chocolate for you. Marcel's not going to be getter because he's already had one. Now remember, this is live and interactive, so we'd love to hear from you. To be having these incredible experiences in this wild underwater forest. It, it was just one of those things which I don't think I'll ever see again in my life. Thanks for joining us on our Sunrise Safari.
Yeah, we've got flat cats here, everybody. But don't worry, we've got chocolate. We'd love to share it with all of you out there in the world, but unfortunately they haven't invented that technology yet. They haven't quite invented the technology of sharing things through the ether or through the TV screen. I've no doubt they will figure it out at some point. Oh, well, it seems like you're still with us here, everybody, live with all the action on this Easter Sunday. I hope you are enjoying your time at home, your family, your friends, whatever it is you might be up to with your pets. Tuning in. Please do send through any questions and comments you do have. Let us know how you're doing today. Are you chilling hard like these lions are? Let us know in the comments what you find yourself up to this afternoon. Okay, well, we're going to stay here, settle in, and send you over to Cedric. Thank you, well done on that, Steve. And uh, yeah, then you got some content there, at least. Uh, I'm just uh, ambling around. Let's see what else we can find. That's right, maybe we see a scrub here tonight. Maybe. Might be lucky. Might be lucky. I think it's uh, going to go a little bit further north. Going to go to Biffleswick Dam and uh, it's going to go sit there, but I'm going to take a look. Maybe see if we can find that crocodile around that side. Gonna go past Steve. Passing Steve with uh, the lions here. I'm right, gonna head over to, as I say, to Bifflesuk Dam side, so we're just gonna go past them here. Thanks, Cosmic Carol. Oh, I got the, uh, the lion's got in the head up. 
That's nice. It'll be nice just to do the northeastern corner of Chuma. I think we haven't done that for a, for a day or two. All right, let's head over to Steve. Well, welcome back, everybody. Not much has changed since you were last here, and we just saw Cedric and Khat drive past Kent offered them some Easter eggs but they didn't seem like they wanted to stop on a mission very interested to know where the rest of these lions are whether they may be followed the herd of buffalo it doesn't make sense the whole the whole pride would have would have moved Maybe they're lying up here somewhere around and we just can't see them. Judy, it's unlikely. I mean, pride does benefits in hunting as a unit, especially when it comes to hunting buffalo. Um, and they'd probably even try and get this guy involved because, well, he would definitely tip the scales from a weight point of view. But no lions to the hunting groups. None of them really wait behind. That's something the cubs will do. If they moved off to hunt, very likely they all would have gone together. Unless maybe these two weren't keen. Sorry, I have to have my radio on as I'm in control of the sighting. Rob, I spent time with uh, the Mapojos right towards the end of their, their career and there was one incident where I spent time with one of the males and he was on a buffalo kill on his own and he was keeping away 30 something hyena on his own. That was just remarkable to see. And there was a, a pride of five males in what was called the Southern Pride in the Singita property. They were quite impressive to see. We didn't get to see them often because they were out in the south and they left the property a lot. But um, two males dominated the area I worked in there. And then they had nine young boys that came of age. And 
they were just starting to sort of become mature when I left and uh, just before I left those five males caught one of those boys and murdered him and that just scattered that group I don't think I don't know what happened to that group of males after that but it was definitely set to be one of the biggest or the strongest coalitions that I I would have seen The Mapojos. Kimberley, they've got a riddled history. Depends on who you ask. I mean, they came from the north here and they moved down to the south and uh, they were known to not only kill cubs and eat them, but to kill lionesses and eat them. It was um, a really interesting, really interesting group of lion, that. I know that at the Cheetah Plains Lodge, all of their rooms are named after those individuals. I mean, the Birmingham boys, when I got here, there were four of them, but two were always in the south and then two were here. I never saw the four of them together. And we tend, you tend to find that a coalition of boys, there's always two that are more closely related than the others. And you'll find two or three breaking off and one on its own or two on their own. Or like the Evokers, we had the, the three boys and Blondie and Mohawk stuck together dark man went on his own but yet they're still called the coalition and the Timbavati last year came across a group of eight young males one of them is a white lion and uh, I'm very excited to go back there again this year and see how they're doing they found themselves in amongst um, a few different coalitions but there's eight of them and eight lions if they stand their ground really can overwhelm two or three quite often it comes down to confidence and big dominant males big dark black maned males have that confidence and they they go in they don't hesitate that often can cause younger males to to think twice and to run away and once the running starts it becomes a becomes a chase essentially I'm trying to think the coalition in the Mara with Scar face or Scar he was in a little group, in a group of five, I think. I don't think I ever saw them together. They were a, an interesting accumulation of male lions. Oh, Car's going to join us. Wants to ask me where to go. Go where you would like to go. <laughs> it's nice that he asks us once he's already in frame, eh? Can I drive in front of your camera? Now I'm in your camera. It's a bit late now, I suppose. But let's have a look at this boy because giving himself a lovely little hug. He was giving himself a lovely hug. about his name. How did he come by that name? Can anybody tell me?
that's better when I uh, have learned to start moving my hat when I want to use my binoculars because otherwise you hear these funny sounds and we all wonder what's going on and it's my binoculars and my microphone having a conversation. Yeah, that's a big, fierce, dangerous, scary, potentially dangerous male lion right over there who's asking for a belly scratch. I'll just let Gwen know. Thanks. Yeah, they're all in one basket. E eggs are all in one basket and 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 uh, oh, that's nice. No, they don't have to. It's just a chocolate cake. Oh. <laughs> all right, I'll get to say mas. Okay, I'll go with cat then. All right, there we go. Yeah, let us save those uh, uh, chocolate eggs for us. Thank you. I think it's like almost like a luxury for us here in the bush. You know, getting little chocolates and chocolate eggs. And it's like, I think, we, I think we'll like, uh, <laughs> we'll fight over that. Just for one little chocolate egg. Yeah. That's a joy. That's a joy. That's the joy of being in the bush. Uh, But yeah, thanks Steve. At least when we can have... Maybe Steve can put the chocolate egg on uh, Gert's pillow and on my pillow for tonight when we go, when we go to bed. <laughs> like the lodges, they will put those little chocolate lint uh, chocolates on the pillows. So, yeah. Um. <laughs> if he does it, I'll tell a monkey to leave him a present. 
<laughs> I don't think Steve will be too happy for a monkey leaving a present on his pillow. Uh, <laughs> Damn, you must welcome. No, it's, it's wonderful. We always, you know, every day is uh, fantastic. Just being out here for us and just to showcase these amazing animals and for everybody else jumping on board the large, uh, world's largest uh, safari vehicle. It's, um, you know, it's fantastic. And now we just need that leopard. Now we just need a, a, a wonderful sighting to kind of just brew somewhere here. Somewhere, and I've got a feeling it's going to happen. So, uh, update about uh, tortoise pan and uh, Tiani. So, there's the two leopards: uh, tortoise pan, the male leopard, and Tiani, a female leopard. Uh, they are busy mating, and I thought they were coming east. They were coming towards Juma this morning. But uh, I just spoke to one of the guides now. They've just stopped inside of Arethusa to a place called Magic Willy. And they stopped in that area. So I'll say give and take maybe a, a hundred meters, hundred meters, uh, hundred meters west of uh, Juma. So maybe tomorrow morning, maybe tomorrow morning. We'll be lucky with those two. That'll be nice. Wednesday morning, maybe Wednesday morning. <laughs> just forgot as well. Now just remember, everybody. Um, so tomorrow's sunrise and sunset safari, and on Tuesday's sunrise safari. It's no, there's no live safari, but there is going to be amazing content that is going to be shown during those times. I exactly forgot. Yep. So we need a leopard now. A leopardo is uh, needed for this evening. Alright, while well, we slowly amble towards Biffleshook Dam, try and get to that side, let's head back uh, to your Stevos to see what's happening with uh, those lions. Thanks, Cedric. And we will definitely keep some Easter eggs. We haven't eaten all of them yet, and we are happy to share. Marcel's already taken his little tax, so unfortunately, Marcel, your Easter egg for the afternoon has been eaten. <laughs> Thankfully, lions don't like Easter eggs, because I'd feel obliged to try share them with them, but uh, do you think they'd enjoy one? Nah, I wouldn't. Hey? Now, I wonder if any of you know who these two lionesses are here. We've identified them. I don't know. I haven't spent enough time with this pride to be able to differentiate who's who. There were seven this morning and last night, so where are they now? Alibamba from the UK, he was around when I was here three weeks ago. I don't know what him and his sons have gotten up to since then. Might ask one of these other guides shortly when we go off. Find out if they know what's happened to the one and only Mohawk and his
guys, boys. And that's a formidable little combo happening there. Once their confidence is in, difficult to keep them away if they want in. might hear some voices we do have another couple vehicles here talking about the lions <laughs> I think they might move a bit earlier this evening. There's a little bit of a breeze. And it's definitely dropping temperature. And Judy, it is tranquil here until it's not. You wish you could live here. Well, the summers definitely are very hot and sticky. Summers are very pleasant. Ach, the winters are very pleasant. What's your favorite time of year here, Beeks? Yeah. Uh, it's winter. Winter. The winter months. So the late winter. Sort of July, August. I love it, this part of the world in July, August. The days are shorter. It's dry. It's fresh, but you can stay warm because, well, I've always got many layers. There's no biting flies, there's no mosquitoes, and you don't need a fan to be able to sleep. Whereas in the summer months, we sleep on top of our duvets with a fan at full blast and have periodic showers in the night just to cool down so as to survive the night. And then when load shedding kicks in and the fan stops working, then the mosquitoes are overwhelming, which I've become quite zen with my mosquitoes. I've stopped killing them. I'm just listening to them. I meditate a lot and they used to annoy me and I've gotten to that point where I was like, okay, if you need to bite me, you're going to bite me. And for somehow, They've started leaving me alone. <laughs> I've just won the Zen battle with the mozzies and now I've come back this didn't. I haven't even seen one. But we have just had some rain, so they'll be back. Sandra, you like the heat. Oh, some people do. Some people do. The lions aren't a big fan of the heat. That's why I suggest that they might get up early today because, well, the wind is blowing just a little bit and it's definitely cooled down quite a lot. Marcel was very thoughtful with the Easter eggs in anticipation for a warm day last year. The Easter egg hunt was on a very hot day. I remember being quite dehydrated that day. But he had the eggs in a little cooler box with two bottles of frozen water to keep them from melting <laughs> so we didn't find the puddle of chocolate on the owls on the, the AV's nesting ledge
out in the wild, life moves fast. To capture the action, you've got to be in the right spot at the wrong time. Now, incredible animal behavior, selected from amazing amateur and professional footage, to reveal the secret lives of animals in motion. This is raw nature, caught in the act. Wild Earth, connecting with nature. We've got this crocodile now here at the Bivelzook Dam. As you can see, it's interesting, just moving from side to side. I don't know if he's trying to uh, lure some fish in there or like, you know, I can say trap some fish on the, on the shallow areas. But this is very interesting, eh? That is a big one. This is Godzilla too. Oh, and you don't want to mess with a big croc like this. And you can see just Moving his head from one side to the other side. Oh, he's got something there. Hmm? I don't know what he got there. It looked like he tried to grab onto something that's inside the water. Very interesting, and it's amazing that the, this crocodile has been spending so much time here. He's spending so much time here at uh, Biffelzook Dam. And the little greenback heron in the background, just passing by. I think he's just come out of the water. You can see his body's well, still wet then. You can see now you're going and going. You're going and going from one side to the other side. Almost like, like Hat was saying now, like a spoon bowl. He's like looking for something. But for what? I don't know. Maybe, I can't think for a fish. Maybe a fish. Maybe there's barbels. Let's see, he's going again. He's digging into the ground there, into the sand. Very interesting this. The main diet is fish until they can grab something like impala or a little kudu or something like that but you know if there's nothing they don't have any luck on that then they will go for fish.
Kimberly, it's nice seeing a croc out the water. Very, very nice. Especially, it's been quite a cool day most of the day. Now, all of a sudden, a little, or the last bit of the afternoon, I had a bit of sun. So I think maybe the crocodile tried to get the last little bit of rays, sun rays, is yeah. No, he's just kind of just started relaxing there on one of the inflows of Biffleswick Dam. And you can see how far he's far down that side. Oh dear, well, if he's alone, he's not going to mate with anybody, or she, we don't even know it's a she or he. It's difficult to say with a crocodile, so you have to actually really kind of take a look and, uh, uh, at the, like under their tail, like the start of their tail, then you can really pick up on a female or male. But uh, for, for us to tell from this side, yeah, now there's no ways. There's absolutely no ways. And of course, if there's no mate around you, then it's not going to mate. But I think it's just maybe this crocodile is just stopping by here for a few days, and I won't be surprised in the next week or two it's going to be off again, looking for more of a, like a, a more of a reliable water source around here. And usually something like Chitwa Dam. Chitwa Dam is always full, so you know there, or they'll go look for a, a big river, maybe head south. And I mean, crocodiles can move as well quite a huge distance at night. I remembered years ago we found. Crocodile tracks coming from Londolozi there in the Manileti drainage line on the uh, the northern side of Londolozi, and it came in and a crocodile went all the way through the west to the eastern side of the northern Sabi Sands, and it ended up uh, close to Chitwa Dam. Ended up in uh, Little Gauri in one night. One night, it moved a huge distance. It's going to come out. Got something in its mouth here. No, it's just his nose. I almost thought he had something. But trust me, I've got no idea what is it doing there. Maggie, uh, to moves like a creepy crawly. I think we'd, we can imagine having a creepy crawly like this at home. I don't think, I don't think anybody's going to go and uh, swim in your swimming pool. I think creepy crawly is just a South African word. Yep. Yeah. So a creepy crawly is one of those. Uh, if you're not uh, too familiar with a creepy crawly, a creepy crawly is a thing that sucks up all the dirt in the water. That do, 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 makes that funny noise. What do they call? What do you think they call it elsewhere? Um, a pool cleaner? No, I don't know what else. We just, I just know it as a creepy crawly. From the old, from this side, Ged, what do you reckon? About two and a half. Two and a half, three meters? Two and a half, three? I'd go close to three. Yeah, three meters, eh? Yeah. About a three meter croc, this. No, that's so sneaky. That's why you always have to watch out and get to water areas and all that. Any dams that you're going to go to. Especially uh, in the surrounding parks and all that, uh, you've got to always watch out. I always told my guests many times, they're like, yeah, but we've never, we have, like for the last two days we've been driving, we've never seen a crocodile in this little pan. And I was like, yeah, just don't go stand next to it, you know, it's not a good idea. There, You never know what's actually pretty much uh, ended up in that uh, water body because, uh, yeah, it's the last thing you want to do is get taken by a crocodile. Like for me, I can, any other animal can take me besides a shark. But a crocodile and a shark, I don't want to get dragged in by one of these animals. No, thank you. I 
Uh, he's going to settle down there now. I think he's just going to relax for it for the time being. And we've got another amazing hunting bird here, a grey heron. Also very stealthy, just as stealthy as a croc. You can see this grey heron just slowly, very slow. Watch the one leg at a time, not trying to create too many waves here and trying to give itself away. And with a lightning strike or lightning speed strike, it'll try and grab maybe a frog or some fish. Actually, I saw an amazing clip the other day, actually yesterday, funny enough, thinking about a grey heron. It was about it was a grey heron and somebody took a a clip of a grey heron busy swallowing an Egyptian geese gosling, a little gosling. Yeah, it's just north of us, actually in a, uh, close to a lodge called uh, Tinswalu. And they saw a grey heron busy swallowing a, catching the poor little gosling and then swallowing it full, whole, done. Yeah. Oh, Tristan Carey, Ke yeah. So it just shows you, uh, herons are quite, uh, quite mean, uh, quite, quite mean birds. <coughs> Shall you say, <coughs> it's your favourite bird in the world, the most prettiest bird in the world. Your opinion, okay, oh it is, brilliant. well it is, uh, Lauren loves it, Lauren loves the uh, grey heron, that's her favourite bird. Oh, a most patient hunter. They're pretty as well. Let's say both. But it is a patient hunter as well. Experience captivating wildlife documentaries showcasing incredible animal behavior for free by visiting lionmountain.tv or downloading the app, accessible on both Apple and Android platforms.
Well, I think it's a little bit more play time than, than anything else. I've got an older one on the side, the youngster on the right. Oh, there. I think it's just a bit of play time. Maybe a mom and cough. That's enjoying the late afternoon. See the crocodile now. I'm still coming slowly this way. comes and he goes. All right, let's head up. <coughs> I think let's head over to Steve with the, the, those lines. Uh, well, we are going to try and look for those the buffaloes. Well, welcome back to where the action is fraught with activity. And this is Chella here who's uh, gonna get photobombed BK. Okay. This is Chella. Notice the injury on her hip. And the buffalo are just sort of north and east of us, so north and west of us now. Probably more lions there with them Danny Franklin, I think the male would love to mate. He'd love to to have a relationship with one of these females. Um, they wouldn't allow him to, even if they were receptive. He's just not quite dominant enough yet, and the chances of him maintaining dominance in an area are pretty limited at the moment, so they'd be very reluctant to mate with him. But uh, his objective is he's on his own, uh, and he knows the lionesses are efficient hunters and he knows that if he can follow them when they make a kill in the heat of the battle in the heat of the kill he's got a very good chance of capitalizing on a large portion of the food no doubt he's been living a life like that following the telemati pride as they hunted and he would dominate He's bigger than them, individually. There's going to be a head rub here. Oh, almost. Aren't you too pretty? Yeah, they're moving slowly further away from the boy. The tail is looking off in that direction. Maybe the other lioness is heading in that direction earlier and she's waiting still for that 
telltale noise of them chasing buffalo. Maybe they're minding him so that the others can hunt. <laughs> I don't think that's the case, but uh, whatever's happened, I have no clue. They've all been in this sort of area since last night already. A couple of them were already here the day before yesterday, so Jim has been a home of lions for a couple of days now. Lion from the UK, you know, lion cubs can go for quite some time without milk. Obviously, it's not ideal the longer they wait. Uh, the longer they wait, it's not just the milk that they're missing out on. It's the, the protection against potential dangers. But it, it is a common thing when a lioness is on her own or has cubs on her own, uh, that her cubs... They don't, they're not as successful as when you have a number of lionesses together because well, they're more enticed to or more incentivized to return to the same area because there's more than one of them with cubs. If just one of them has cubs, we saw that with Amber Eyes, she unsuccessfully had cubs for a number of seasons until all of the females bred at the same time. Then everything shifted. It was all in the same area. The lionesses were incentivized to remain quite local and uh, so we saw very successful rearing. Uh, when you see just one litter of cubs in amongst the whole pride, no others are being born, the success definitely deteriorates. Oh yummy. She's watching that boy carefully. He, he yawned a moment ago and she did a little bit of a head dip towards him to sort of say hey I'm watching you so I mean one in eight lion cubs will make it to adulthood that is sort of a statistic but in my opinion when you have more than one lioness breeding at the same time not only is the ability for communal suckling you got more than one lioness in the area they don't go as far away hunting and the cubs aren't left unattended for long periods of time. Uh, when a lioness is away, she can cover vast distances. And if she takes two, three, four days to come back, it's not just the lack of milk that is the concern. It's the potential of them being detected by something else. So I don't have a, a day or a number of days for you, but I would say they could go for more than a week. But I think that would really, if they're at that tender age, would really influence their growth potential because that stage the milk is just so rich and all the nutrients that they need they're just growing bundles of fur without it definitely impede their growth watching him Tompa I don't know I haven't seen them but the insight is not far from here uh, Cedric was with her last night or was it the night last night eh? and she went in and out and in and out and I don't know I can't say See how she's, both of them, he's looking at them, and that's her behavior. Lions are very visual, very body language orientated. He's sitting, we're not going to go to him just yet, but he's sitting with his shoulder or his back to them. And that behavior you saw them both do there was when he turned and looked at them. And that was them saying, hey, 
That's the same thing they do if they see us on foot. They go low like that. And it's, a, it's the precursor to something else that can happen. The going low is, first it's the look, then it's the low, then it's the growl, then it's the tail flick from side to side, then it's the tail flick up and down, and then it's the charge. And that can happen slowly, and that can happen incredibly quickly, depending on how fast whatever it is is encroaching on those specific boundaries that each of those behaviors is being triggered by. We might hear another vehicle. We have Aubrey from Juma who's come to join us. He's the one who called in the buffalo not long ago. Steve D, it is a beautiful thing, isn't it? It's imperative that the lionesses have a strong bond. They have to defend the territory. They have to defend their pride against other prides. They have to physically work as a team to pull down large prey. They look after each other's cubs. They communally suckle each other's cubs. And they will fend off male lions who threaten their progeny. Okay, so he's turned around, BK. Do you want to maybe give him a little look? Because we haven't really seen him until now. And we'll keep watching our lionesses and how they react to him. Yeah, that's a lion right there. He's going to prepare himself for the evening. Putting on his best dress. We'll stay on him and I'll just let you know that Chella is not happy that he's here. <laughs> she is not happy. And he's just pretending he doesn't really care. That's the best thing to do. kind of looking at her out of the side of his eye going I can kind of see you there but I'm not intimidated by you at all because I'm a big fierce male lion after all you see when he stands up if he stands up which is what normally happens after a yawn and a bit of grooming then it'll be interesting to see the lioness's behavior. You were with Cedric last night, so you probably saw a fair amount of the aggression that goes goes on between lions that don't know each other or not not bonded. Uh, he's looking over longingly. Please accept me here, ladies. I just want to hang out with you and go on a little bit of a date. Please, please, please. Experience captivating wildlife documentaries showcasing incredible animal behavior for free by visiting lionmountain.tv or downloading the app accessible on both Apple and Android platforms.
He's not fully developed. He's still got a little well until that mane fills out nicely. But uh, it's coming along well. He might not even develop a full mane. Not all male lions do get the full head of hair. But it is a bit patchy at the moment. but he finds himself in a very precarious position as a nomadic young male. Other male lions want to kill him. Female lions don't want to see him near them. And he's somehow still got to eke out a living. Very interesting time. It definitely builds lots and lots of character. All right, so we are in infrared at the moment. We have lost a little bit of light, so I've gone into infrared. And uh, we have located on that herd of uh, buffaloes from this morning. It looks like they have moved further north from Twin Dams and coming a little bit further north towards our camp area, but pretty much between our camp and Twin Dams for now. But look at the nice male. Look at those horns on him. Beautiful boy. And then you've got a female coming in front of him. Much thinner horns compared to those males. Oh, look at all those flies. Oh, that'll irritate me. That'll irritate me quite a bit with all those flies. And they don't buzz off, they just kind of go back and sit exactly where they took off and you can see. But now the rest of the Nkuma pride, where are they? That's the question. Are they following these buffaloes? Are they behind them somewhere here? That could be the question. And only if the Talamati male f went with the Nkuma females away from Chilla, it would have been a good idea. At least you can feel a little bit more relaxed without that male hanging around Twin Dams where her cubs are. Oh, but look at this male, he is not. <laughs> when they lift their heads up like that and they sniff the air, you know, that's when a buffalo is meaning, watch him, watch him. He's meaning business. Oh, they haven't got a tag on the ear. The left ear. See there, got a tag. The one at the bottom. Got it? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's got a tag. I've never... That is interesting. You've been tagged. You're it. Yeah, you... <laughs> oh, you'll tag this one in the post tonight. <laughs> Ha uh ha. -huh. Anyway, yeah, so interesting to see a tag on a buffalo. Oddly, I don't really get to see any buffaloes tagged here in the Greater Kruger Park. So, yeah, that is interesting. Hmm. Maybe just like a little GPS uh, tag that. It seems like a little GPS tag. So just to see sometimes a little bit of research on certain animals. And uh, clearly they are researching buffaloes and their movements. So... You can see exactly where these buffaloes move through the entire park. Huh? Oh, he has a big boy next to us here. Yeah. Full of mud on the side. Caked with mud, yeah. Monica, yes, it's nice looking at uh, watching buffalo herds, and the best is watching buffalo herds when lions are following them. Then it's nice to watch a buffalo herd. But not in a dog. No, not in the dark for her to myself. Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, we, <laughs> it seems like we, every time I'm with Khat, it seems like there's always buffaloes involved in uh, our drives. So, uh, yeah, maybe Khat is uh, a buffalo magnet. A nice big boy, this. Nice for nice boss on him. Not the biggest of horns, very short horns, not that real long extended horns. 
Well, most of them are already moving north over the road. So I'm just... And it's a big herd, this, apparently, this... Uh, if we count uh, the members or the individuals in this herd, you're almost looking over about 150. I just spoke to one of the guides today about this herd, and he says, yeah, it's a decent size. I've seen bigger. I mean, I think my biggest herd, buffalo herd I've seen here in the northern Sabi Sands is when I was working at Arethusa, and it was, I think it was 2016 or 2015. We had a herd of around about, we worked out about a thousand buffaloes in that herd. So it stretched, stretched all the way from Arethusa Lodge all the way towards Triple M, one of the service roads into Juma. It was a huge, it was like a, a sea of black uh, buffaloes. Oh, a Fleming smiling at us, a Fleming grimace. So yeah, these herds can get quite big. Mm, oldish female. Yeah, they sometimes do that, <coughs> and they start, start um, going into little, how can I say, um, smaller herds in summertime. Once there's a lot of rain, a lot of grass around, a lot of uh, water around, then they start becoming a little bit like in you know, a smaller herds, uh, start splitting up. But then winter time, uh, they'll rather you'll get two or three herds will actually amalgamate. In other words, they'll kind of uh, come together in safety in numbers, especially that their body condition in winter deteriorates due to the lack of grass in winter time. And then if you've got safety in numbers, it helps them just to feel a little bit safer that way. I just got this feeling of tawny cats following them here somewhere. Somewhere. Keeping our eyes peeled. So we are pretty much sitting there. We're well, just situated. Yeah, we're situated at the back of the herd at the moment. Right, I'm just going to go a bit forward because it looks like there might be one that's in the water here. Yeah. So I'm going to go a little bit forward. Yeah. I know there's none in the water. Sorry, my bad. Thought there was. I think it just came through the water. All right, that's fine. We'll just go on top here. Mm. I find the hurdle pretty much kind of start. Coming closer together, sort of becoming a little bit tighter <coughs> once the sun's now setting. And I'll go and maybe look for a little place to go and rest for the evening. And hopefully they can get good rest. That is, that's if uh, the lions do not go and bother them during the evening. <coughs> Excuse me. It's good having buffaloes on Juma again. Wonderful. In the summertime, it seems like we're always lacking these herds coming on due to so much food and water around. And then when uh, winter comes around again, the grass that hasn't been grazed on here, uh, buffaloes tend to get drawn back to these areas. Nathan, yes, 11 years old, they do, they do. Um, you'll find sometimes the older males, they tend to peel off from these big herds because they don't really have that energy like the younger ones. And then they start peeling off and then they start lagging behind or they start just sitting at water holes and that. And you'll find that uh, 
we'll have three, four, five, six of them together in little batches. And the reason for that is just to pretty much uh, uh, have safety in numbers. Yeah, we're just on the other side of you guys. No, 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 I'm just, uh, we're just uh, focused on the road, yeah? <laughs> I just see your mother coming in there. At the moment we're at the uh, Pangolin track. We're actually just uh, west of Chilapan. West of Chilapan and uh, Pangolin track. That's where we are currently with the buffaloes. Iboof. We've got a refreshing splash of entertainment this March. Africam is surfacing with a new show. Join us every morning and submerge yourself in nature's ambiance. Watch it live and transport yourself to the finest watering holes across Africa. Wild Earth, connecting with nature. We are in infrared, as you can probably tell, and our male lion walked up to the two females and there's been absolutely nothing between them. Absolutely nothing. He's so much bigger than them. I think whatever was going between them, they sorted out last night. They had all night to do it. I think that's what they say, you know, when two couples of having a hard time lock them in a room until they figure it out it's essentially what happened here last night this this boy had seven females to attend to and uh, 
Well, he doesn't look like he's had a very rough time, does he, BK? No, he managed to get through it seemingly unscathed. And uh, although those lionesses were showing some interest in him earlier, they're completely blasé now to his presence. Completely blasé. The bonds of lionesses run deep. Darling, which other female is pregnant? I'm not sure which one is pregnant, but yeah. If there are some more cubs to be had, maybe. Because they're all hanging around here. And we know the Mawanti drainage line has been the source of our big cats. Successful breeding over the last few years. Chella had her last litter just up the drag here and purple eye, ridge nose, amber eyes had theirs also just in the river not far from Chella Pan. We're just a few hundred meters from there as we speak. Lovely sounds of Clan Hahina. Those hyenas are calling from towards the drainage line towards where the potential den is. I don't know if it's right there by the den, but you would think Cello would react to hyenas being close to what was said to be her den. Cheeky baby Ellie, a little cuddle puddle. Nothing quite like it. I quite like it on an Easter. Excuse me. On an Easter Sunday afternoon, Easter evening. Okay, I'm no expert, everybody, identifying who these lionesses are. Um, BK was with Cedric the last two days. Kimberly Lopez is saying neither of them are Chella. Okay, very good. Similar injury, perhaps, on the hip.
So everybody, thank you for helping us get to over the 130,000 US dollar mark. We're going to keep the donation drive going while we try and build a war chest until Sunday next week, 7th of April. On that day, we will have a town hall to regroup, explain what has developed over the last two weeks and chart a way forward. Please do keep signing the petition. We need over 10,000 signatures, which we have achieved. So thank you for that. And our lionesses are on the move. Is our boy going to follow suit? Very eerie there, doesn't it? And there we go. North of a head. Slowly but surely they'll head towards the buffalo. Britain, you love how they get up and follow each other. Yeah. Might need to do my immobiliser there. Here we go. A little head shake does it. Make sure we don't drive in any lion scat, BK. We're checking. Okay. No, they're not. They go straight there. Is there a little puddle? Puddle. Let's go around this little little link row. Oopsie. So they're going to try buffalo, who are ahead of them now by probably a kilometre or two, with the rest of the lions while they do that. Let's see if we, if they go the road now, that'll be great. If not, then uh, we'll have to see if we can figure out where they've gotten to. Are you a wildlife fanatic glued to YouTube for your daily dose of animal antics? Then welcome to Africam's wildlife community. By joining our YouTube memberships, you get no ads, just wild live streams, chat with other bush fans, get early access to exciting camera spots, and flex your wildlife knowledge with fun quizzes. Visit Africam's YouTube channel and click the join button now.
to name it. Uh, slowly but surely approaching camp. What a lovely afternoon. What a lovely afternoon. Nice crocodile, nice uh, uh, buffaloes. Easter hunt was quite uh, entertaining. Well done to Steve on uh, winning that one. And then uh, mm, I'm coming up to camp. Oh, there's a bunny. There's an Easter bunny. Well done. There's a little scrubby. Oh, that's we'll just say Easter bunny. It's just behind this little tuft. The that there. There he is. See the little ear. Okay, I'm gonna like kind of we'll see, but freewheel down here. Slow freewheeling. Just okay before it runs off. Hey, little Easter bunny. Hello. Not the biggest of ones, oh, you youngster. A nice little scrubby. How fitting for Easter Sunday, having a little bunny. Hopping around here yeah, on the big open clear, clearing this south of our camp. I might just try and go a little bit forward, see if we can. Come on, freewheel. You can do it, Cedric. You can do it. Uh, might get him better there. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, we might. Okay, let's see. Yeah, that's a little bit better. There we go, a little youngster. Oh. Yeah, Susan, what an ideal way to end Easter, yes, with the little scrubby. Hey, eh? that is uh, so, so ooh, fitting. I just went black. That is cute. That's a nice way. Mm, still on the bunny. Sorry, my screen just went completely black here. So I thought oh, that was quite strange. But yes, uh, <coughs> so tomorrow, tomorrow and Tuesday we will not be live. Just remember that we're not going to be live, but uh, sunrise and sunset safari will be replaced with uh, amazing content. So please still join tomorrow and take a look at all the amazing content that we are going to show you, as well as uh, yeah, we'll see you again on a, a live live safari on Wednesday morning. Sorry, I just hear Impala's alarm calling behind me. Yeah. Well, it's just one impala. <laughs> African sunset, yes. Happy Easter to you too, and uh, thank you so much for joining us on uh, on the world's largest uh, live safari vehicle. And uh, it has been quite a a wonderful day, and I'm hoping that everybody had a fantastic Easter weekend. And spend some good quality time with friends and family and uh, just had a blessed weekend but what a way to end this evening's sunset safari with this uh, scrubby and as I want to say once again thank you so much for all the comments and all the questions that everybody has sent through to us this afternoon and joined us on our Easter hunt and once again well done to Steve on winning the Easter hunt 
Well, you did have like 20 minute head start. <clears throat> anyway, so yes. Um, well, we will see you once again. We'll see you on a Wednesday morning for the Sunrise Safari. But uh, yeah, from uh, Gert, from the Wild Earth crew, from a little Easter bunny, and from myself, have a wonderful, wonderful uh, evening further. Good night. In two magical wilderness areas, the Masai Mara in Kenya and the Greater Kruger Park in South Africa, five expert safari guides follow a cast of compelling animal characters and the never-ending story.